Well, hello there and welcome to another edition of Warbird Wednesday. My name is Fred Bell. I am the vice chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum with my Mouton and Rajay assistant. Did I get it? We, we've gone back and forth on that. I have, I really, I have to look that one up. He kind of threw that at me as well as the hat. I realize it's summer, but this is ridiculous. He threw this at me right before shooting. I'm going to have to go ahead and toss it. There we go. The, the ice cream has gone, has left the building. That was pretty funny, Greg. I, I must admit. Greg is getting peskier. Wait, it, it gets worse for those of you at home. So today we are looking at the Douglas, the A3 Sky Warrior. I'll go up and throw a plan view up of this. This aircraft was affectionately known as the Whale, and there is good reason for that. Originally designed in 1949, the, the Navy was looking for this was originally a nuke bomber. And the Navy, at this point, everybody was in love with atomic weapons. Atomic weapons are gonna solve everything. There were gonna be super carriers and super bombers and super everything, and everything was gonna throw nukes at everybody. So everybody was playing with atomic weapons. And the services, because they were scrambling, for money to justify their existence. The Air Force obviously needed a lot of money to deliver atomic weapons. Uh, and, uh, when we started with this, rockets weren't a, necessarily a very viable delivery system. Intercontinental ballistic missiles were kind of coming around, but uh, we were still looking at uh, manned weapons. and. We've done enough episodes, I've covered this, they were looking at rocket launched fighters with nuclear bombs on them. They were looking at, as I said, enormous bombers. They were looking at a nuclear powered bomber. There was a nuclear powered um, scramjet that they looked at to deliver nukes, which by the way, that didn't, is a little off topic, didn't work very well because you could hear it an hour before it showed up, it was so loud. And what did it spew behind it coming out of the scramjet? radioactive waste. So when you launch the scramjet, you nuke yourself before the, the logic is not very good. So hence the whale. Now the whale designed in 1949, again, a nuke bomber. It was the largest aircraft ever launched off of an aircraft carrier. Big, I mean, they have test launched. So you affectionados are gonna go, no, oh, I've seen a C-130, I've seen this. This was the largest operational heaviest uh, aircraft that was ever launched off an aircraft carrier. Uh, it entered the, its first flight was in 1952. It entered the fleet in 1956. Uh, and as I said, it was the heaviest uh, operational aircraft to fly from a carrier. It was originally designed to fly off midway class carriers to our friends down in San Diego. Uh, that was, this was designed to go off of um, uh, a carrier about that size, and of course carriers got a lot bigger, but it um, it also had, it could do JATO assist. Think about that. It could actually have rockets and get launched off a carrier that way. Power plants were consistent with what we've seen. J-57s, J-57 was the weapon of choice. Now this aircraft is unique because think about this, largest, heaviest operational aircraft ever launched off an aircraft carrier. And then we have the A4, the Skyhawk. Think about the Skyhawk, little tiny Sparrow airplane. They were both designed by Ed Heinemann, who was a very prolific Douglas engineer. And what he came up with was an aircraft that would be really kind of a Swiss Army knife airplane for the Navy. They could do all kinds of things with that. We're gonna talk about it. But its nuclear mission was first. Its big problem was it was what? It was so big. It was not maneuverable. It was a huge target. And the Navy fairly quickly figured out that this, it, it, they needed to get into some other roles. 
because as nuclear weapons were involving atomic weapons into nuclear weapons, it, uh, it, it had a very, very short lifespan. There were 282 of them built. Now, I have, Greg, never run into an A3 driver. I've never run into anybody with an A3. But if you flew in the nuclear role in this, you were part of the, that, again, nuclear triad at that time, and you kept the United States safe. Now, the interesting thing about this aircraft is you flew in this airplane, and we're gonna talk about this a little later, what did it not have? If you were flying in this airplane, did not have any ejection seats. So think, think about that for a moment. Now, we're gonna explain how that works, and Greg, when I get into this, uh, can cover the how you would eject out of this airplane, but we're going to come back to that in a minute. But it did not have ejection seats. So you're going off a carrier, heaviest airplane ever launched off a carrier, uh, and basically you have no way out until the floor hits the ceiling. That, that's about it. Because remember, on a carrier launch, you're, if you're down low, you lose one of those engines, the carrier basically runs over you at that point. So not very much fun. If you were a crewman on one of these airplanes, I think you deserve a salute. And you deserve a salute. You've lost your mind. You have, and this one, remember last week I said, oh, it was nice, it's fairly pleasurable to the palate. Well, Greg took that to the extreme, and God knows, how old this is. This is, <laughs> I don't even know how they would package this. This is Bob Ross Positive Energy Drink. Um, I'm looking here. Boston America Corp bottled it or canned it, whatever. There's no date on this. It's 12 ounces. Added sugar 78%, so they're going to juice me up again. Uh, but there has to be, there's like some sticker on this. I have a feeling that that's like a do not sell for display only or something. But we'll go ahead and open this up. And as I said, if you were an intrepid soul that flew on one of these A3, these A3s in the early days, I salute you. Here we go. It did actually kind of pop a little bit. Gazanga. Yeah, wow. That, yeah, he's enjoying it. Greg, if you can only see his off-camera expression. Mm. Mandatory second step. It is blue, by the way. Um, that's nasty. That is terribly nasty. I did the mandatory, very careful second sip because there probably is a good chance that there's some bacteria or something in that, given the age of that. Even the can feels old. It feels dated. So the, uh, as, uh, on the A3, they used it for a lot of different stuff. It moved out of its nuclear role, and then it moved into electronic warfare in Vietnam. It was an electronic warfare aircraft. Uh, it also was a photo reconnaissance airplane. So what ended up happening with these uh, and like a lot of these other airplanes that we're going to talk about, like we talked about the P3 last week, as sensor packages got better, they just kept upgrading the sensor packages. As I said, they never solved the fact that there was no ejection seat in the airplane. There was an ejection tunnel, and in Vietnam, because the airplane was so big and they lost a few of them, they had the A3D model of this had the nickname of All Three Dead. Isn't that a nice, uplifting thing that you want to get assigned to an airplane? But they kept uh, using it and upgrading it. Now, they upgraded it up to the Gulf War in 1991, which, if you can believe, it flew up to that point uh, in a reconnaissance and electronic warfare role. And then it kind of went into history. Now, it had also been used prior to that as a tanker. And I could see this aircraft being used as a as a tanker. So uh, the weapon of choice for the military around this time was the uh, 
the A6 in a tanker mode, but I could see these, although they weren't very prolific, I could see these be used as being used as a tanker. Now, they were retired by the military in 1991, but the um, private industry continued to use them for various uh, testing projects, and they were actually used all the way out until 2011 when the last one was retired at that point, they, they went away. So they are now completely history, they're gone. Uh, another kind of interesting airplane for the collection, if we could ever get one, awfully big, take up a lot of room, but, but kind of a, an interesting airplane. Now, if you wanna show your colors for Douglas aircraft, and I know you do, I know you do, you are going to want to go out on the link and click on the link for that shirt. This is a amazing Douglas shirt, a company that uh, has started so many different things and is known for so many technological advances. Unfortunately, they have gone into history with the Boeing merger, but you can click on that link. Jason will skip around the world and get you a Douglas shirt. Now we cannot do, I'm standing in the Pacific hangar, we cannot do all this work and keep all this stuff going without your donation. So click on that donation link. If you came across us on YouTube, we love your subscription, a like, give us a comment. The same thing with Facebook, give us a like and a comment, we appreciate that. We are taking, if you got an idea on an airplane, we love your submissions. If you're teaching the kids at home, there are educational links attached to these videos with all kinds of fun stuff for the kids to do at home, especially over the summer. You could teach them over the summer to do that kind of stuff. Now, my name is Fred Bell. I am the vice chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum. Thanks so much. Have a great day.